Let us now stand and sing Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. <coughs> As we praise our loving Father. And Holy Spirit, of course. Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. with you. Is that right? You feel 
Sorry? Gives you hope. Gives you hope. That's a good one. Yeah. But this word comforter comes from a Latin phrase meaning cum, with, fort. What's a fort do? Strengthens us, exactly. It gives us protection. So if you're playing a piano, some of you folk who do music or you're singing, what does forte? Loud. Loud, exactly, or powerful, as opposed to piano, which means quiet. So, because uh, of all two of the um, of piano is literally quiet and loud, because it's the first instrument you can adjust its uh, uh, strength. So, and if not, someone has their forte, um, say uh, Andrew down the back there, he just loves philosophy. That's his forte. It's his strength. Rob, yes, I'm looking at you, Andrew. <laughs> okay, he's not down the back all the way. So the comforter, in this sense of the word, from the original Latin, means one with strength. Okay? A lot of us think when we read the in modern English that this comfort is where the Holy Spirit pats us on the back and gives us encouragement. But it's much more than that. The Holy Spirit is the one who stands beside us with strength to get us through, to give us that hope that the will shared with us. So, always remember that. The Holy Spirit comes with power. And as it says in Hebrews, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Who said that? Jesus, Jesus that's right. So we'll be looking at how Jesus and the Holy Spirit with the Father is actually the triune God. A little bit, amongst other things. And of course, we thank all the mothers, uh, thank God for all the mothers that we have in our lives too. So, by the way, I've got my mum a big bouquet of chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, for those of you who are new, I don't think we've got any new folk here today, but we um, have a retiring offering, and you can either chuck, put it in the um, plate at the front or at the retiring plate at the back. Now, there's no obligation, of course. The Lord loves your sacrifice, and that's what he gives us in the first place. But your, your offerings doesn't have to be monetary. It can be service or care or any of the other gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us to use to his kingdom. So let's come before the Lord in prayer once more. We do have to pray for our um, brother Jim, who's not too well at the moment. He's um, had a bit of a downturn. I had cup of tea with him the other day, a cup of coffee, and um, yeah, so he's not doing too well at the moment. But we have had some great um, encouraging news that our brother Bill's doing quite well, okay, and especially our brother um, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, oh yeah, this is called dementia, <laughs> David, sorry David. But he's had a, a remarkable comfort after his some procedure he had uh, this week too, so we can thank God for that. And we also pray for um, several of our folk who are travelling uh, and ask for travelling mercies. So let's come before the Lord again in prayer. Thanksgiving and supplication. Almighty Father, we thank you for the gifts that you give to this congregation and to your church at wide. We pray, Lord, that you bless the gifts to the glory of your kingdom and your name and for the upholding of those who actually sacrifice, whether it be time, service, prayer, or financial support to the extension of your kingdom. We ask that you might extend your love because it was you who drew near to us to make us draw near to you. So what can we say of this, Lord? Our heart admires you and adores you and loves you. Our little vessel is as full as it can hold. And we would pour out all that fullness before you just to get more and more. Lord, you are our hope and our help. As we just heard in the children's story, the comforter, the one who comes with strength and the lifter up of our heads, our hearts rejoice in your salvation. And when your spirit allows us to converse with you, a thousand wonderful thoughts flow into our souls with refreshments and joy. 
They seem to crowd the happiness of the, the, the many months into every single moment. In humble wonder, Lord, we bless you for the knowledge and grace that lifts and sanctifies our soul, though it does not flourish as much as we want. We bless you also for the body that you've given us, the senses that we enjoy. And even more importantly, we bless you for the strength and ability to serve you in whatever capacity we are enabled. For Lord, we are troubled with weak and weariness, whether it's emotional, physical, mental, or spiritual. You are with us. We bless you for the ability to move under our own power mostly, and guided by your power. Your hand stays close to us and strengthens our nerves, and ultimately restores our strength. We praise you for the bounty that you've given to us every single day and for everybody through common grace. <coughs> for the tables that you spread before us with the food and the overflowing cup that you place in our hands. We don't take this gift or these gifts for granted because we share it with so many of our good friends and our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, thank you for so many dear relatives at home and for kind friends near and far. And thank you that they can help us when we need it and that you also enable us to serve them, being remind, uh, mindful of it is better to give than to receive. Thank you for a heart that feels these sorrows of those in need and a mind that can think of the ways to serve, Lord, even with our very humble abilities. Because these things come from you, O oh Lord, and you're the author of every caring act and every wise plan and every successful attempt to spread happiness or relieve pain to our loved ones and those around us. Thanks for granting us compassion for those in need as well as for those already blessed. And we humbly ask that you bless the young stewards of these resources, these monies, be given understanding and wisdom how to serve you and honestly serve others. Almighty God, we adore you for the streams of water in paradise, maintaining it in an ever-flourishing, ever-growing delight. We praise you for the rest and the joy you are giving to many who were once dear to us on the earth. And our job was to ease their pain and promote their joy of our loved ones. Thanks for the blessings of every saint and the angels that surround your throne. We praise you for the hope you planted in our hearts that we will soon experience ourselves what we can only now see dimly and from a distance in this dark world. So even now through your grace, Lord, we feel your supporting arm leading us toward heaven. We await your salvation with a blend of that passionate desire that believers can't help feeling and a calm surrender born of your unchanging promises. So Lord, we particularly want to commit to you those of our midst and those of our number who are unwell. And we particularly bring to you our thoughts towards Mark in Budrum and to our brother Jim and his supporting wife, Kathy. Lord, we ask that you might watch over them and Father, you are here with us knowing that in our hearts we carry so many burdens of, of health or um, personal issues or trauma. But as we learn the children's talk, you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for that. We thank you for the loved ones that we can tend to and who can't be here this morning because they're unwell like Keith Myers. Or Lord, even uh, those who are travelling away from us, like Margaret and our, our brother and sister John and Barbara. Lord, we commit all of them and ourselves to your caring hand. Even the horrible things that we look at in our life draw us to you as they make us run into the everlasting hands of the loving God. So Lord, we pray that you hear these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus. 
Amen. I'd now like to call upon Elder Cliff to read us from the Gospel of John. If you want to follow us in John chapter 1, verses 31 to 34, about the baptism of Jesus. Thanks, Cliff. And the reading is that John has said, John, John 1, 31 to 34. And I did not know him, but that he should reveal to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And he remained upon him, and I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Amen. 